Hey everyone, Austin Schneider here. Welcome to Rise Podcast, where we talk about real influence, self-development, and entrepreneurship. What's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of Rise Podcast. Super honored today to have in the flesh my good friend Wiley Cortez. Yeah. Wiley Cortez. Wiley, give, give these viewers and listeners a quick rundown of, of who Wiley is. Man, Wiley, uh, businessman, uh, entrepreneur uh, in the leadership space, in the confidence coaching and performance space, uh, multi, uh, multi-business owner and- Serial filled, entrepreneur. Yeah, serial entrepreneur and um, all led by my spirituality and my faith. So that's a huge part of who I am and what I'm doing. So yeah, man. Cool. Yeah. Well, thanks for being on, man. Absolutely, man. Thanks for having me. I'm honored, bro. I think the listeners and viewers are, are in for a good next 45 minutes to an hour. Yeah. They ain't ready. Well, if, if you're watching this, you yeah. see Wiley. He's He looks like a gorilla. He's freaking <laughs> yoked. His voice is just bonkers. He's yeah. Like, great voice for podcasting. Yeah. He's inked up. Um, talk to us about, so you're, we know the like the cool Wiley, like business owner, blah, 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 yeah. blah. But we, we had a really cool opportunity to sit down in Suncadia. Yeah. Um, what was it last year at our good buddy's bachelor party? Yeah. And got to hear a little about your story because mm-hmm. I think a lot of people see you for who you are now, but they don't realize what the last, uh, like what the last, like what actually went into yeah. the making of who you are now. Right. So maybe backtrack a little bit and kind of share, share what you can just from, from like the stories of LA and, yeah. and, and SoCal and kind of where you were at there. Absolutely, man. Well, I was born in Southern California in a little city called Riverside and not much goes on in Riverside, man. A lot of, a lot of drugs, alcohol, jail time, prison time. Uh, very few people actually make it out of that city and um, played basketball pretty much middle school, uh, into high school, varsity four years, and then junior college. Well, during that time, I was also involved in a lot of different things in the streets, uh, moving, hustling, buying, facilitating drugs, and a lot of a lot of different things that also pertain to that. Uh, those of you who know that can understand what that looks like. And that ultimately took over my life. And when it took over my life, it was, it was terrible. It was a very dark place, very, very toxic, uh, in and out of relationships. And so like you were selling drugs, Yes. you were on the streets, like were you going to school or were you just- um, I was one foot in one foot out is the way I like to describe it because I wasn't fully committed to school. I wasn't fully committed to the streets. It wasn't until later on, um, at, in junior college when I was going, I got just the streets just pulled me and it just basically took over my life and that's what I knew. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> backtracking to where the city of Riverside and where my parents raised me, my dad is a really good man. However, his family grew beyond, I think, what he could manage and led him to be working a lot. Mm-hmm. So I didn't have a role model or a father figure at that time. What ended up being my father figure and role model ended up being the streets streets teaching me, teaching me how to how to make money how to treat women how to do this that and the other and ultimately it wasn't it wasn't something good uh landed in jail for the very first time and i'll tell you guys man the very first time i landed in jail was just terrible um you know for those of you who believe or have some type of higher belief i believe in god and i believe that that was one of the times that i was as close to god as i could ever be because I was in a place where I wasn't familiar with people were, you know, basically, you know, for lack of another word, a bully, you're coming into these, into these jails and you have to show rank right away. And I quite honestly hadn't built that credibility just yet. So going in, I was 21 the first time I went in. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. How long were you in the streets and like committed to that? Before. Probably for about eight years. Wow. Yeah, eight years and just in it, fully submerged. Um, so the, the jail piece is really critical for me because as 
I don't believe that uh, a higher being or a spirit is in proximity to you. I think that it's always with you. Like for me, it would be God. He's always with me. But for some reason at that time, I felt like it was, he was right there with me uh, or I was reaching out for him because I didn't know what the heck I was doing or where the hell I was going. And um, ultimately ended up getting out. I'd love to tell everybody that my story changed and, you know, it's rainbows and unicorns after that, but unfortunately not. For? Six months. Dang. Yeah. So it was, uh, it was a long stretch. Too. Yeah. <laughs> Just in it. Oh, some of the worst times Austin were when family came to visit mm. just because of the expectation or the standard that the family had on you, on the family, on brothers and sisters. And when yeah. you see them in that space, it's like, uh, so it broke me. Yeah. It broke me beyond, um, you know, crying and depressed and sad and angry. Um, so it was, it was a hard time. It was a hard time. So anyways, coming out of that, <clears throat> um, ultimately ended up having my kid. I had a kid, um, Cicely, she's now 21 years old, happy lover. She's amazing. Um, and at that time, Rachel, which is my wife now, um, was pregnant with her and ended up pulling me a little bit away, but not enough to like stay out. Yeah. And <clears throat> so pulled me out a little bit, ended up getting back into it. And because of everything that I knew or had been taught, it wasn't uh, in conjunction with raising a family, sure. being a boyfriend or a husband at that time or anything rather. So pull me back. Rachel and I's relationship was really rough and rocky. And to the point where I had been in and out of jail throughout that time, I was in jail one more time and the judge was Wiley Cortez one more time and you're going to the big house big house is prison i would never been i don't want to go so you're going in for jail for like drugs or yeah like drugs fighting, drunk driving whatever. robbery armed <laughs> robbery <laughs> it was it was bad man it was it was terrible um and looking back at it now i'm like man something was over me and covering yeah, me through that whole time yeah, because yeah. there's no way that i should have been through that and out of that well what yeah. gets people into that in the first place like how does one just get all consumed is it somebody brings you in and it's like a figure and you're like dang like, this yeah. looks really cool or is it the money is it the attention is it the i think status? it's everything i think it's it's the it's what you see like in a movie right the the status the money the life which those are all just a facade because once you cut down into the real deal i mean the majority of the guys that i was rolling with or people that i was rolling with you're at a trap house with maybe yeah. a nice car outside it wasn't yeah, anything yeah. like you weren't going to mansions and, and, you know, Ferraris and Lambos outside, you know, you had, this was in the nineties or late nineties. So it was kind of like what you had your nice little, uh, Lexus or a nice forerunner or something, right. Yeah. With a banging system or whatever, but it yes. wasn't like luxurious, but yeah. it looked that way, yeah. especially from where I was coming from. And to answer your question about what drives you to that? I think not having that mentor, that father figure, that sure. person that's leading you and directing you because although my dad was an amazing man, he just wasn't around to instill those disciplines in me. So what was? Oh, it's easy to step outside and run with the local gang. And if you know Riverside or if you know Southern California, there's one on every corner. Yeah. So, and they're all looking for people to, to bring on to either pedal your stuff, run your stuff, deliver your, you know, whatever. So <clears throat> that's a little bit about, about that. Uh, ended up moving out of state, uh, which led me to Seattle for a while. Um, and again, the story goes, I didn't come to Seattle and everything turned into, you know, rainbows and unicorns or a great life. I found the same type of people doing the same type of thing. Um, again, ended up hitting rock bottom, not necessarily landing in jail, just getting kicked out of my parents' house, living out of my car. Yeah. Cause um, your family moved to Seattle. So yeah, my family moved to Seattle and there's a, there's a little bit of a more disconnected story because it, the reason they moved out was because of some, some gang affiliation as well. But, um, <clears throat> so ended up making my way up here, ended up getting a job at a remodeling company that, um, saw something in me, man. They, they housed me, they gave me a company car gave me an, uh, a position uh, as an administrative assistant in a company, which I'm thinking like, man, on the streets, administrative assistant, this isn't a cool job, right? <clears throat> so anyways, ended up scaling my way up through that into a uh, managing role and really excelled, found out that I could work with people. 
Uh, I knew how to motivate people, inspire people, and drive people to do better than what they ultimately were doing. And I didn't realize that I had that in me until that place and that opportunity and those people. And was it like a particular person that was like, hey, yeah. Wiley, like I see much more in you than what you're doing or what you've been up to or what your track record tells you? Yeah, so it was, um, and I remember his name to this day, his name's Bob and really generic name, right? But yeah. his name's Bob. Bob. <laughs> and he, um, they would do the Dale Carnegie training, personality profiling. And so I got to sit in on that just with an earshot. It wasn't yeah. even me tr for me training, but just started picking some of that stuff up and applying it. And um, he saw that I was really personable over the phones, talked to people when they came into the store. Yeah. So he pulled me aside and he's like, hey man, have you ever done anything like this? Yeah. <clears throat> I was like, no, I haven't, other than what I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and the whole reason I'm saying that is because what I did learn in the streets translated over into the into the business world yeah you have to talk to people you have to know who you could trust you have to know who you could scale with you have to know who can manage finances you have to know how you're going to grow your business and all of those things were taught yeah to some degree in the streets obviously it's more it's legitimate and there's ways and ways not to do that in in the business world but um, a lot of that translated or transferred over yeah so ultimately ended up slowly getting out and um but I think it's cool that you found one person who like was, hey, I see, yeah. that's similar to my story. I had mm -hmm. a guy, Gary Rubens, I wanted to be a police officer, I wanted to just be construction, I wanted to just yeah. kind of float, retire by 60, call good. And this Gary, who founded the company that I was working for, yeah. is like, hey man, I see a lot more in you yeah. than, than you think yeah. you're capable of. And to me, I was so laser focused on what I wanted to do, what my parents taught me, what yeah. society thought I was going to be. Until I had someone who had a similar story to me who yeah. just worked his butt off and right. now he founded this company, sold it to Lowe's for a couple hundred million, right. telling me, yo, dude, like you got more in you. Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, light up. I'm like, yeah. let's let's do this. Like there's there's more to myself. Yeah. And that seems like what it's like happened to you too. Yeah, and you know, along the way there was those people that came into my life that said that. Yeah. But because I was so submerged, I wouldn't even pay attention to that. Like, mm -hmm. what are you talking about, man? You can't make more money than I yeah. than I'm pushing in a week or a month or a, you know, a quarter or a year or what have you. So I never listened to that. It wasn't until I got into a space like this to where now I was mentally ready yeah. to listen. Why was it? Was it because you're out of your I was out. Or? I was out. Yeah. I mean, this, this place was in Linwood and I was working out of a, you know, there's not very much going on in Linwood. So it's yeah. like, I'm removed. My kid's now up here. She's going to school. I'm yeah. providing. We have an apartment, you know, so different, started different purpose, life. Started yeah. to get a why, started to get. <clears throat> yeah. So that's where I realized, man, things are, things could be different. Yeah. And you could live a life where you're not worried about, you know, watching your back or what have you. So um, that was, I think, the pivoting point to who you see today. Yeah. Right. And stealing and believing in that. Because those people that would come into my life before, I was like, oh, man, I, yeah, you're cool, whatever. I believe you, but let me go get this. Yeah. This guy actually, I had to show up every day to work. So he was there and he took the time and invested the time and energy. And now since then... I understand that those people come into our lives. Everybody that comes into our lives is there's a there's a time and a purpose for them, right? So the time that they spend with you, there's a purpose behind it. And there's been several men that I admire and look up to that um, have successful marriages, raising kids in the church, um, you know, successful businesses, yeah. a community that believes in them and that he believes in this community, which is huge to me. So when they start speaking to me and into me, guess what? I'm receiving it, man, and understanding like, hey, this is somebody, this guy's talking to me or this person's talking to me through somebody yeah. else, right, yeah. to me. So now I listen. It's, it's very important to listen. And I've taken a lot from these people that I've met throughout and applied it to my life and how I execute and how I live <clears throat> how I run business and how I treat people too. Yeah. So, um, yeah, man, that's, that's a little bit about that and how I got to transitioning to where yeah. I'm, I'm currently at. I mean, so many different gaps in that, yeah. but I mean, every single season has a huge story behind it in, in my, in my, in my story, just like everybody's story. Yeah. I mean, now you're leading a couple, you got a couple of companies, a couple yeah. of things that you're really pushing right now. I think probably your one of your bigger things is you, you have a company of how many employees? Uh, 50 employees, Pricor Technologies, um, that has a sub company called Go Blue Light, which is a um, end user uh, platform for to facilitate leads to plumbing companies, 
to get them excavation work ultimately is, is the goal. Yeah. But yeah, and that was built from from the ground up. Yeah. Ground up and started off as something where, you know, maybe seven or eight people and now it's eight years old and yeah, about fifty people. Yeah, fifty people is no joke. Yeah, it's it's not a joke. I just I just left a, a management meeting this morning, and geez, personalities, yeah. revenues, overhead. I mean, you talk about it all, and it just yeah, it's a lot. I think a lot of people, like either listening or watching this, aspire to lead maybe fifty people yeah. or be a leader, or they yeah. are a leader, and it's yeah. like it's it's something to like read in a book. It's something yeah. to like do. But once you actually apply it, take some take some weight on your shoulders. It takes yeah. some. Take some like takes the real yeah. deal because you're dealing with real people and like real personalities Absolutely. and real challenges that actually affect people's lives, yes. you know, and it sprawls against other people. Yeah. How did you how did you get in like leadership and like learn about leadership to actually equip yourself? Man, so <clears throat> just along the way with with what was being instilled in me um, with these mentors or uh, business figures. You know, they would talk a lot about that in your leadership skills, qualifications and how you're going to lead and who you're going to be as a leader. So started just like you said, diving into books. The application piece, though, is is a lot different when yeah. you actually start applying. So what I learned is what I learn. I have to be an example of that. And the example of that is ultimately going to trickle down into or be a part of your business. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so that's how I started started listening to podcasts, Mm -hmm. uh, reading books, going to seminars, uh, applying for uh, higher ed Mm -hmm. to be a part of that and and just actually learn how do people, how do people operate? Dale Carnegie's personality profiling, man, that was gold to me. How do people react? How do you talk with them? How do they respond? You know, all of that. So that's how I started developing myself. And then as you go, as you grow, you're going to, you're just going to start learning. Yeah, I think that's key as you go, as you grow, as you actually apply it, yeah. you know, because I think so many people, a lot of people at least that come to me are even are like, oh, I want to like be a leader, I want to be honest yeah. but it's like, <laughs> you got to go, yeah. you got to grow and you got to like learn along the way. You can't just, you can't just learn and soak and not apply anything, right. Right. you know, right. where it's like, you can't just like read a book and expect it to happen. No, definitely not going to read a book. I don't think there's a book. I think there's help books, books that'll help you, but there's not one book that's going to show you how to lead. Yeah. anyone yeah. you know so it's just a matter of getting out there and, and actually one pursuing what your passion is and along that you're going to develop what it is that you're that you're needing to develop yeah. in order to grow and be successful in whatever it is you're doing and whatever success looks like in your business in your life in your space or what have you yeah yeah then you got make moves not statements yeah make moves not statements man that was something that was uh birthed because of a of a mindset that I have in that, yeah. you know, I believe that you you know there's a lot of people that don't make the moves, but they talk a lot about making the moves. Yeah. And I wanted to create something that separated that. Yeah. There's there's a lot of people, and you've probably heard me say this phrase: the movers, shakers, and territory takers. Yeah. Those people take steps out of their comfort zone, out of their and there's nothing wrong with this, out of their nine to fives yeah. to pursue what they're passionate about, to pursue what their dreams are, to pursue what their conviction inside from, again, a higher calling. I believe I have a higher calling. I'm gonna pursue that. Yeah. And I am, <clears throat> make moves, not statements, also came out of three different questions that were asked to me a while back. Who are you? Mm-hmm. My life is and, and uh, oh, my name is and my life is about, and what are you passionate about? Mm-hmm. And in order to understand and execute those, you have to make the moves and not statements, right? Understanding who you are takes three different things. To me, in in my confidence coaching, it's the foundation, the identity, and out of that identity comes the confidence. Once you know who you are in the foundation space, there's no moving you, man. There's no moving you. And in that confidence, you're going to find what your purpose and calling is through that. Yeah. So you'll move through into uh, my name is Wiley and my life is about. Yeah. Right? So you said ident- you said foundation, which is your identity. Found- well, foundation. And once you know your foundation, yeah. How do comes you the identity. Your foundation? It takes a lot of digging, but you, you basically strip yourself down to pillars of your life and what you stand on, right? You're a man of faith. You love people. You yeah. want to grow people. You are confident. You are 
And then you start breaking those things down. Once you identify, for example, me, my foundation is in God. That alone is huge. But now I dig deeper into that. What does the word say about my foundation in him? Now I get a sense of purpose, a sense of identity behind that. Well, now I walk in that confidence yeah. from the identity that I have from my foundation. So it goes, it goes back and forth picture like arrows going up and arrows going yeah. down. So that's one of the ways in, in my confidence coaching, identifying who are you, mm -hmm. right? You ask somebody just in passing, and I would challenge or encourage some of you to try that. Ask somebody, hey, who are you? Yeah. Nine times out of 10, somebody's not going to be able to answer that. And that's okay. Because if you do, we can help you identify that. Yeah. And, and with Is that, it like questionnaires or like how, like yeah. how do you dive into this? Yeah. So the way I do it, yeah, you have a questionnaire that you fill out. It's an intake form you fill out. Um, it's about six pages long <clears throat> and ask you all kinds of questions from where you were born, where you were raised, yeah. how were you raised? You know, so yeah. many different things. We, and we take it apart in our sessions. And then out of that, people start building like, oh man, this is why I did this, or yeah. this is why I don't believe in myself when I do this, or what have you, and you start peeling that apart. It's like identifying those things. Once you identify those, again, it creates the confidence. So you're, move, you're moving through yeah. a process, and each of them is about three months. Yeah. So you go through foundation for about three months. It could take longer, it could take shorter, yeah. depending on where you're at. We call it ground zero. So ground zero, structure, and future. <clears throat> It's like building a house. Yeah, building a house. It's like the, the foundation stuff's <clears throat> ugly, it's messy, it's not the prettiest yeah. thing to do. But once you have the foundation yeah. laid, you can, like the deeper the foundation, you can, the higher the structure, yep. the bigger the and structure, you can go. the more weight yeah. you can handle. Yeah. And confidence, I believe, is a big factor in how you move in life. If you don't have that, or if you have a little bit, or depending on the measure that you have, you're going to be limited to anything and everything that you're doing, right? So a business, it's going to cap out of, at a certain level if you don't continue to build something, confidence, yeah. business knowledge, people skills, right? So yeah. a lot of different things in your relationship with your wife, girlfriend, kids, yeah. other friends. So what, what is holding people? Like, why do you think people don't take the time to do this stuff or, or they, they maybe, are they just comfortable with going through the routines because you know i think a lot of people can yeah. benefit from this because a lot of people yeah. are always like i don't know what i want i don't know what my purpose is i don't know who i like you hear it all the time because yeah, we're we we're in the the quick culture we want to just right. kind of float we want what the next person has we don't mm -hmm. know what we want internally and why right. we actually want it right and i think it does have a lot to do i think the root of that would be something that you just said you hit it right on the head the comfortability mm -hmm. of i'm doing what is getting me paid. I'm doing what my parents told me to go to school. I'm doing whatever it is that you're doing. You're not being challenged. Yeah. You don't want to seek further. And that those are the movers, the shakers and the territory takers. Those are the guys that want to know what am I here for? What am I called to do? What is my purpose? Um, one of the things in my, in my discovery phase was to help and grow people. So we unpack that. Yeah. We unpack that for like four months. What does that look like? Why do you feel called to do that? So when you talk with somebody and they truly want to know, you're going to unpack something. And a lot of the times it's scary. Yeah. Like, what does it mean to help them build, grow people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that everybody? Is that a select few? Is that the construction company? Is that what Make Moves is about? So you start looking at a lot of different things and, and you, when you unpack it and a lot of people aren't ready to unpack. Yeah, for sure. They're happy. Yeah. It's clocking hard. in, it's hard clocking unpack. out, getting up, doing the same thing the next morning where, man, I believe even in you, even in anybody else, I believe that you can create and live an unimaginable life. Yeah. Come on. If you know what your foundation is yeah. out of that foundation, you have your identity and out of that identity comes with the confidence that you move in because you know yeah. that you can create and live an unimaginable life. So it's oh, like, man, no, it's so good. Yeah. I was just at this, the event down in LA yeah. driven yeah. and literally I, I had three takeaways, but one of them was clarity. Yeah. And they, like, when they say clarity, it's not like, oh, I want to be, you know, like a millionaire. I want to yeah. have yeah. a business, right? Yeah. It's like, you are crystal clear on what you want, yeah. why you want it, Absolutely. and how you're going to get there. Absolutely. And that's what I'm hearing, like, what you'll do is yeah. kind of help people unpack, like, why do you want to go where you want to go? Yeah. Like, and then they can be confident, and then they can be pushed, Moved and then it's like, boom, yeah. yeah. 
And it's like, I'm in my lane. This is yeah. now obedience. Right? Absolutely, man. And once you have the confidence in what your passion is and you move in that, yeah. a lot of different things happen. You're not taking the, hey, let's get together and chum it up, man. Yeah. You're making meetings and appointments and getting together sure. and building your business based on what your passion and purpose yeah. is. So you're making appointments. I'm making an appointment with Austin because I see him scaling. I see him building. I see him growing. I see him moving. Yeah. What does that look like, man? How can I help? Yeah. If, does it line up with what I'm doing? If it does, great. If it doesn't, hey, we're buddies in the same space doing the same thing, growing and developing. Yeah. So there's a lot to be said. And again, a lot of people aren't ready for that, man. Yeah. A lot of people want to just live that, Normal. let's just go. Yeah. yeah. What I wouldn't consider that normal. I would consider pursuing what you're passionate about normal, right? Because yeah. that now you're living. You're actually living as opposed to existing. We've all heard that. That's a cliche phrase. Yeah. Living in, instead of existing. When you live, you're after something. You're getting up with a purpose. You're motivated. I mean, you wake up 4, 30, 5 o'clock in the morning, man. You don't do that unintentionally. You're doing that with an intention behind it because you believe in what you're doing, what you're passionate about, your purpose. You're grounded in the right thing. Again, I, I don't want to sound like a broken record. You're grounded in the right thing. Your foundation is proper. You know who you are yeah. and you're confidently pursuing what it is that you're wanting to go after. So yeah. it's huge, man. It's huge. And a lot of people, it, especially specifically post-grads and young entrepreneurs, I think these, this is key for them to grab when they're, when they're in that phase because you're going to cap out and you're going to get discouraged. I, I, I was at a coffee shop not too long ago and I had this young, this young guy come up to me. He's like, hey man, what, what advice would you give me for somebody that's just starting up? Keep going. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah. Now, you want to unpack that a little bit more. Okay, let's, let's grab coffee, but keep going. Yeah. He's like, oh man, I got, he's in a detail business. I got two vans, man. I don't think I can keep the other one going. What do you, what do you suggest? Keep going, man. Sure. What do you have to do to keep yeah. that second van going? Or does, right, does it make sense? So that would be the quick one-off, you know, in passing, no, no. Uh, grabbing coffee or what have you. Just keep going, man. Yeah. Keep doing your thing. Keep making the moves that got you to where you're at. Because yeah. you're going to need to make bigger moves yeah. to get to that next level or to get to that next phase season in your life. Yeah. So You got to keep the momentum. You got to start the momentum. It's, easy, it's easier to push something that's already going down the hill yeah. than it is to actually get it started. Yeah, so once you start, then yeah. you get the momentum, then you just keep going and keep Absolutely. going. And you're gonna improve, man. And Absolutely. I think one thing you said was the alignment piece. It's like, if I am pursuing my goals, if I'm starting a business, I have two detail trucks, but I'm hanging around with like sheep. Yeah. I'm hanging around with people who exactly. just wanna hang right. out on, on the right. weekends. Why is that, like, how right. is that gonna serve my goals? But if I'm so laser focused, I'm hanging around people like Wiley, yeah. I'm hanging around people who are feeding into me, I'm hanging around people who are also doing it. Right. It's gonna, it's gonna make me go. I mean, that's a huge part of my thing. It's like, man, I have boundaries. Like, right. I say no a lot. Yeah. Like, I say no to getting coffee with a lot of people. I say no because yeah. is this gonna serve me? Selfishly, I, I just, I, I don't have the capacity right. to do it because it's not gonna serve me for my purpose and where I'm gonna go. So I also think like the boundaries and the alignment are so, so paramount key. in order so to key. actually grow. And that's a leadership trait, man. Yeah. Leaders know how to say no and yes to certain things because they know where they're going yeah. and what they're doing. People that are just aimlessly walking life, yeah, man, I'll grab coffee with yeah. you. And there, there's nothing wrong with, I don't want to paint that in the wrong picture because it is okay to say yes to go yeah. grab a cup of coffee with somebody or grab some lunch or dinner. However, when you're driven and motivated and know where you're going, you're going to be a lot more in tune with the appointments and what your time is being used yeah. in and with. Yeah, particular about your time. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's like I even think about how I spend my time. It's like, okay, I got my work investment, I got my friends, I got my spiritual, I got my obviously Sabrina's yeah. and it's like right. I know where I'm investing a majority of my time right now. It's right. it's work and Sabrina. Right. And it's like right. those are that's my boundary and right. I don't have much capacity outside of that. And I'm firm on that and I, that's why I am pretty laser focused on what I do, right? <laughs> but if I wasn't aware then I'd be floating Just and then everywhere. everything would suffer though. Like that's the thing. If I'm getting coffee at midday with this person yeah. then it's like I'm losing yeah. focus, losing direction, getting pulled down, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely man. So good. Yeah. What else you got, man? Dude, all the things, bro. So what would, like, I mean, if someone's listening to this and they're trying to figure out the purpose, like what, like what should I do if I'm listening? I'm like, man, like I'm hanging out with these chumps or I'm, I'm, I'm trying to push to the next level. What are we telling these people? I'm telling these people to listen to uh, people that are speaking into your life. 
that's that's what was huge for me being ready and aware that people will speak to you people will see things in you that they'll say Mm -hmm. like hey austin have you ever thought of doing this because you're really good at or you're really good at this austin you should look in developing this skill and doing something with it it's going to be those things um, or those people that say these uh, things and statements that are going to help you and walk you towards what you're passionate about. Ultimately, we all have dreams and visions, yeah. so we need to unpack what those look like as well. Um, you know, in quiet time, in at a coffee shop or what have you. But my experience is like I told you about the the man Bob. Yeah, yeah. He saw something in me. Yeah. Once I recognized it and was aware. That's naturally me. 100%. So it was. It's it's a matter of somebody being ready to listen and understand um, what people are saying to them. Yeah. You're going to get a lot of people saying a lot of different things, but something that resonates with you, something's going to hit your spirit, your soul. So I'm like, oh, you know what? Yeah. What Wiley said or what Austin said, yeah. I need to look into that because yeah. I am good at that. And obviously, believing in in it is. Have you ever heard the Have you ever heard the saying you can't see a forest when you're in the trees? Yeah, yeah. It's like you cannot see. Like I remember even Brandtejic is honestly a product of this. Like right. someone pouring into me and saying, "Hey, you're really good at this marketing stuff and yeah. branding stuff. You should try something there." Right. But I was so laser focused in what I was doing right then and there that I didn't. I wasn't able yeah. to zoom out and see the forest. So like, okay, where can I yeah. actually go? Where can I take the the company? Or where can I? What should I actually do with my life? And that trajected me to actually start Brandtejic. And, and pull from there, yeah. you know? So yeah. I think having the humility to listen to people and being open-minded, man, hiring a coach, I think is huge too. Yeah. Like, like yeah. the beauty of 2021 right now is e-learning, mentorship is at your fingertips with podcasts, with, yeah, with whatever. You can yeah. hire coaches who are doing what you need to do right. for what will, like, yeah. for a career or for a lifetime to change your life that's going, like, I don't know why more people are not taking advantage of, of that and spending oh. their time doing that. Oh. You know, it's yeah. like, listen to some podcasts every day. Hire a freaking coach yeah. to get you pumped up and actually get you executing and doing get it. Man. So one of the things... Uh, and you've done that too. Right? Yeah, You're a yeah. product of it too. Yeah, I'm a, I am a product of that. And a shout out to my boy Jeff, man. He's, he Jeff works with Osborne. Me. Yeah, Jeff T. Osborne, man. He's, he's, he's killing his, his thing as well. And um, when you get those shoot i lost my train of thought there um yeah as you were saying something though um shoot i lost my train of thought yeah (laughs) yeah no i lost it'll come back yeah 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 it was i think it was in reference to the forest being in the forest Mm -hmm. because when somebody says that like to you um this isn't what i was thinking about but when somebody says that to you you have to analyze what that looks like because just because you're good at marketing and advertising and business development doesn't mean you go and start a company, right? Mm -hmm. But that's a skill that you have. Mm -hmm. That's amazing that you did and you are and you're scaling. Um, But at the same time, that might be, hey, go work with a company and see what that looks like, right? And and understand it. Is this the passion? Is this what I'm passionate about? Because you can step into that space and be like, man, this is miserable. I hate it. This sucks. So, um, I think a lot of people get eager and we're in the microwave culture they want everything yeah. now so yeah. they like it's just having the patience and humility like we got so much life to live absolutely man absolutely it's i remember what i was going to say six months. yeah, go yeah. coaching i recently got an opportunity to speak to the uw football team i don't know if you knew about this wow. yeah dude this was this was an incredible uh, opportunity so i got a chance to speak to them and I, t- I spoke to them about transitioning and the whole purpose behind me uh talking with them was because a lot of them transitioned out of uh, college football. These were football players. Um, they have uh, baseball players and basketball players as well, but this was specifically the UW football team transitioning out of that and not knowing what to do. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't know how to transition. And one of my points with them, and you, you hit it a little bit, was coaching. You've gotten coached your entire life to play football. Yeah. Elementary or peewee to Uh, middle school to high school to college some of those guys had gone to the nfl in life why wouldn't you hire a coach to have you excel at the level that you have in football Mm -hmm. a lot of us forget about that that coaching we all need coaching doesn't matter what level you're at Mm -hmm. 
You could be the best. I mean, you could be one of these top names that we all know. Those people still need coaching because they want to get to the next level. So transitioning from one place to another is going to require some type of podcast. It's going to require the coaching. It's going to require listening or jumping, going to a, a seminar and understanding where am I at right now and what do I need to do to get to where I need to be? A lot of the times that's going to require some coaching. And there's so many different, there's performance coaching, mindset coaching, confidence coaching. There's like so much. Yeah. The beauty of it. Right. And Tiger Woods has a swing coach. Exactly. And look at the level of play that those guys play in. Why would you think that to transition into something else or trans or just live life at a higher level, Mm -hmm. you wouldn't need that. Yeah. And and that was one of my messages to that team uh, was, you guys, when you transition out of here, whether you're a sophomore or a senior, when you're a sophomore and you're going into junior year, you're going to need help transitioning into that. You have a coach for that. Yeah. You guys that are seniors, when you transition into life, yep. the corporate world, those of you who aren't going to the NFL, why would you stop? Yeah. Okay. You need you need that. So that is such a key point that you that you brought out. But <clears throat> I just wanted to emphasize that because, and I and that was something that I didn't go through either. I'm thinking here, I'm going through life, just learning from my bosses that I had previously. And it was like, man, I'm learning the wrong things now that I'm going through a development phase. And it's like, what the heck? Yeah. And just understanding the different principles. I think another big thing, just even in transition or if someone's listening and it's like, oh, like what should I do? Like, how well are you leading yourself? Yeah. You know, Absolutely. like, oh, I want to lead these. Okay. How well are you leading yourself? Like, what are your daily habits? Like, are you being like led by somebody? Like how, like, would you be hired by you? Like, would you yeah. trust you? You know, I ask myself all the time. It's like, yeah. would I recommend myself? Like Jesse, there says that, would you, would you recommend yourself? Yeah. Right. And then whatever you say no to, you're just like, okay. Or like, why no? Then those are areas that you can improve. Yeah, and that's what you got to actually press right. into and, and improve on. Yeah. And it's like no. leading your, yeah, it's like, Better. Yeah, and it's not just eight hours a day. It's not just the work day. It's like, what are you doing from the morning yeah. and then once you go to bed? Yeah, absolutely. It's like once you can learn to lead yourself, and it's the hardest person to lead. Yeah, <laughs> yourself, and you're the you're supposed to be the example. I mean, yeah, we got we got what thousands of thoughts a day. Eighty yeah. percent of them are negative, and ninety percent of them are from the day before. It's like if you can lead someone like that, then yeah. you're you're equipping yourself to really. Take it to the next level. Yeah. Crazy. So 15 employees, how's the company doing? Killing it, man. Killing it. We just had, um, so last year, and I think we talked about this in 2020, in in a pandemic, we had a record-breaking year, not only in revenue, but profitable revenue. So it's just crushing. Last month, we had our best revenue year, or less revenue, or our most revenue month um, that we've had in 12 years. Uh, no, not over seven oh, figures. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, not over. It'll yeah, there. it'll get there. No, so it wasn't. It was we talked about, bro. Right? Yeah, we're like seven figures a month. I was like, we're on dude, our we way got there. This. We yeah, got we're this. on our way there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and and we're just growing in a lot. Of, you know, we're still in a business. I think it's still young. It's a toddler, if you will, mm-hmm. seven years old. Mm-hmm. Um, you're still understanding, learning policies, procedures. Mm-hmm. Uh, how to develop the people. I mean, developing yourself is one thing, but developing people is another thing. And just creating that culture throughout the business because of the lack of culture before, like the first few years, it's been a challenge to recondition the team, to think different, to be different, to drive different, to be motivated for specific things. So what is that transition? Like, what are you like from what to what? From no culture to a culture of being the people that we serve people. Yeah. We're out there helping fill a gap for uh, a space that has a gap, right? We're in the sewer rehabilitation space. Yeah. A lot of companies that we work with don't infuse capital into their businesses to do that. So guess what? We do, yeah. so hire us. Yeah. And we need to understand what that looks like from A to Z. So we're expressing that, communicating that, encouraging yeah. uh, the good behavior, the team atmosphere, where. Previous to this, man, it was not a team atmosphere. It was like, I'm the number one sales guy. I don't care what you guys think. Yeah. So now it's more getting of a team some effort. Core values yeah. in place, yeah. getting everything. a mission, getting yeah. some people on board. Yeah. What has been the key from like developing it from seven people to 50 and as you continue to grow? 
Um, the that's key, a, that's big. Yeah, it's, that that especially is especially in your industry where it's yeah, a little bit trickier to. It is. It is, and we're experiencing that right now. Labor has just been tough, man. But one of the key things, uh, or a couple of the key things, would be to be the model or the leader that you want to see out of the people. That is, um, as cliche as that sounds, it, it, it is very important and you have to be that. First of all, like you said, you have to develop yourself to be the leader that you want your company to see, but then also to be the person that you want them to model after. So that has been key. And then instead of um, working with them like this, working with them side to side or alongside of. So a huge shift happens when they know that you're working alongside of them instead of like me, say you're my employee and me just watching over you and picking you apart every time you like do something right, wrong or otherwise. I'm walking along with you on this journey, man. I'm developing you because I want you to be successful, whatever that looks like for you. And obviously that has a that has an impact in our company. It's gonna help build our company. But when the people are more important than driving revenue, than profit, than anything else, the company organically grows because that person knows that you're invested in them and in their well-being and their success for life. Again, whatever that looks like, some of them have some sales guys that are just strictly monetary, dude. They just want that paycheck and they want it to be as big as possible. There's other guys, man, my family, I just need to provide for them. I want a nice house, I want a nice car, I want to have things, I want to do things, which is a byproduct of the finances, but that's not that's not what's driving them. So understanding them as well has been critical. And I think that has shown the biggest uh, change from not only in uh, revenues, but in people development to where I'm saying, hey, have you heard of Brantigic? That's a great place to work. Yeah. Before people were ready to leave, now they're knocking on our door to come work for us. Yeah. So that has been huge. Mm -hmm. Where, man, that says volumes about the company where people are knocking on our door to come work for us, as opposed to before you couldn't wait to get out for a better opportunity because there was nothing to, there's no value being provided other than a compensation of a check. Yeah. A check will only take you so far. So those are a couple of things that, that we've done as a, as a, ownership and leadership group of our company. Feeding into the people, yes. worrying more about them. Yes. How can you satisfy them? Yeah. With boundaries, of course. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, if people are stoked to come into work and they feel excited about the culture, they'll stay longer, yeah. they'll work harder, they have more yeah. of a purpose. Absolutely. So is that injecting with the like, promotion like opportunities or more just like, hey, I care about you? Or what is the it's conversation like? Our, our company, al although it's, yeah, our, our company, although it's, uh, even though it's 50 people, there's, there's not much um, upward mobility because, I mean, it's, it's operated by the ownership team. So it's yeah. kind of like you can only get so far up. Um, and it's not promotion in the sense of like you're being promoted to something else. Mm -hmm. It's the value that we're providing outside of the monetary piece, mm -hmm. right? We're developing you as a person. We're investing. You know, we, we work with uh, the WILD team. We have uh, a transaction activity coach yeah. that helps us dive into what does it look like to uh, create a transaction mm -hmm. in a space, whether it's business to business or, or uh, customer to, to company. And also, uh, we provide different benefits like, hey man, you have an issue, you need to see a counselor or something, we got you. Mm -hmm. So we're taking care of the person in, in whole because we understand that they're what's driving this business. So it's, and I think that value they see as bigger than mm -hmm. like, hey man, here's a paycheck for today or yeah. for this week or for this month or what have you. And those added, uh, that value add yeah. has been big because in our construction space, if you will, not a lot of companies offer that. Yeah. They do try to entice you with the monetary piece. Here, your compensation plan is gonna be X, Y, and Z. Nobody's doing this. But then your the employer really doesn't good. care about you. He's yeah. not managing you correctly. He's not leading you to a better life. I just had an employee leave as much as I hated him leaving. He left because of the development that he's had. He's gonna go start his own business in a different state in Idaho. He's, he's going to Idaho to start his own business and do his own thing. One of the things he said in his exit interview is because of how I've developed and I have the confidence to move wow. with what I've learned yeah. by myself. Yeah. Who doesn't want that? Totally. I want you, I'll, I'd like all my guys to move into yeah. a space like that. Yeah. Um, and a lot of them have the capability, yeah. um, 
but again, you're secure with what you're doing, your sure. income's good, what, what have you. So yeah, man, that's some of the things that we've been doing on our end that has helped. It's one thing I'm trying to, yeah, I'm always trying to like think about ways to do that yeah. and make everybody happy. Yeah, because yeah. you know, I was told a long time ago, but never really applied it. The compensation plan doesn't add up to them going the extra mile. They're gonna do what they came to do for that, yeah. for that dollar or that yeah. money. It's the value that you provide beyond that that's going to help them be motivated to go secure another customer. Yeah. Go sell that. Really be motivated to sell the call that you're on. Yeah. Grow the business. Get on with the mission. Yeah. Actual with the get, mission of it. Get along with your operations team as yeah. opposed to like hate them. Yeah. Because they're see not. See them as an employee or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Right. How do we get them on board with the mission? Yeah. Jesus was the best example of doing exactly, that. Exactly. Right. My gosh. Come like, on, man. Yeah. The team that he assembled. Yeah. Diverse. Like. Got him on with a yeah. mission, cared about them, decided Brought them, the most people. fed into them, like yeah. help, like walk alongside of them. Yeah, it's freaking Jesus. Right? Yeah, and then what I'm an like example. this autistic guy, and it's like, you want me to come <laughs> yeah. with you? It's like, yeah, what? yeah, it's yeah. Like, come on, come on through, man. We'll you know? get you. We'll get you set up. Yeah. So that has been that has been critical. And if I narrowed it down to one man, is walking alongside the employee as opposed to like, um, it, obviously you have to manage them, but yeah, top down. Uh, scenario i feel like but what about when conflict happens like when you're side by side like you get to know it, it's great because now you have the relationship so you can address it more of from a relationship standpoint in this top down scenario Makes sense. so uh hey austin we've been killing it man uh, just a couple of things that i want to bring up to you that have been issues you know that you're having with dispatch or what have you uh, something like that that conversation starts like that and then intent too also stating the intent behind the conversation. Like, hey man, I just wanted to get with you. You're yeah. crushing it, but I also want to let you know that you're having some issues with this. Sure. And we need to correct them. In order for the team to be successful, we need this to be corrected. Yeah. And you just go into the things. And a lot of the times it's not, we know businessmen, some of these things, there's resistance too. Yeah, yeah. Um, just be prepared for it. And obviously none of us like to have those awkward, weird conversations because they could go in a different way. But I'll tell you what, they're a lot better when you're working alongside of the employee than just like, hey, top down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, hey man, get in here. There's a consequence to what you're doing, blah, 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 you know, what have you. So yeah, that's that's what I would say to that. Um, they're not always easier, but when there's a relationship um, aspect to it, it's, it's uh, I think it's recept received yeah. in, in a better manner. For example, I just had one of our employees had an issue and um, it was outside of work. He felt really bad. And he came to us like, hey man, I feel terrible. I feel like I let you guys down. It's like yeah, yeah, yeah. from that particular person, I don't think like six years ago, I would have heard that kind of humility from him. Yeah, yeah. Been like, man, whatever, get, yeah. you know, get out of here. And just, yeah. Uh, so yeah, that has been huge. That has been huge for us. And um, we're, we're also in a phase, man, where we've never done the kind of revenue we did last month. So we're being exposed with our, with our um, shortcomings as well. Lack of policies, lack of procedures, no or, well, yeah, we exactly. We HR company, actually. Did you? Yeah, yeah to so. Do policy stuff, Bambi. Have you heard of Bambi? Uh, no. This is an endorsement, but it's like a, it's like a, it's like a contractor, essentially. Yeah. They're like, yeah. They're awesome. They do. Okay. You should check them out. Yeah, I will. I heard, I've heard him on podcasts before, heavy, yeah. so I was like, man, yeah. I'm going to check them out. Check and them then out. as we've grown, I'm like dealing with the policy stuff, whatever. I'm like, <laughs> I can't be doing this myself, yeah. so i got to have someone else do it. So we, we just hired him this week. One of the last thing I wanted to hit on was like, what are you doing daily that's keeping you sharp? In practicality, if I'm listening to this, if I need a breakthrough, if I want to lead myself better, if I'm trying to get more confident, what, what, what could we model from, from what Wiley does every day? Man, what I would what I would say is take time, um, and you're you're a good model of this. Take time in the morning before you get your day uh, going. I talked about transitions earlier. Transitioning from waking up to actually getting your day going is a very important transition. So, understanding what that transition looks like, because the the better that transition is, the more effective you're going to be during the day. Right? That transition could look like some quiet time in the morning, just understanding what your day is going to look like, who you're going to meet with. What are you doing today to be pr productive? And when you understand that, you're gonna 
not necessarily attack your day. You're going to go about your day in a different manner than just transitioning out, going to grab the cup of coffee, drink it and not know you're just going to fall into your first appointment or what have you. That has been really key to me in the quiet time that I spend. I also think about who I am, my life is, or my name is, and my life is about. Those are, those are key things. Yeah. Purpose, passion has to be at the forefront. That's what motivates me. That's what keeps me going. That's why I take appointments that I take. That's why I'm developing myself. Understanding like, hey man, today's a development day. Today's a day that I need to go talk with Austin. I need to go talk with Rob. I need to talk with Jeff um, or have that already scheduled. Um, getting in front of people that are in a space that is, I think you mentioned it earlier, that is already successful in your space or that is driven to be a success in the space that you're in because they have different ideas. They have different motivation that you can pick up. Um, you know, I love these, these, um, these reels that you put up because in the morning when you pop up and you look at something like that, you're like, Oh man, that's a good takeaway. Yeah. And that could just, I could carry that, you know, surf on that for the rest of the day or different people that, yeah, yeah. that have that kind of inspiration, um, in, in your, in your life or space or something that you want to do. So that's what I would say is, when you transition out of getting up in the morning, understand what you're doing. Not just in a, not just in a way where, oh man, I got to get up. I got to go it's to the office or whatever. Yeah, 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 for <laughs> yeah. sure. Have, have some time to understand what your purpose is for the day, who you are and live out who you are. Yeah. Not just live. Yeah, or have exist. a vision. I mean, I always yeah. say like the, the purpose of having, like imagine going on a road trip and you don't know where you're going. It's yeah. like, where am I headed? But if yeah. you have a vision of what you want to accomplish today, what your intention is, then it's like, oh, let me just yeah. map across this bad boy in there and I'll be good, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, vision is paramount. Daily. Daily, man. Understanding what that looks like every day of Calling your life. To start training your particular activating system to attract that stuff. Manifest it. Yeah. Call yourself to the daily habits that need to achieve it. Absolutely. And one of the things that I do, so I set my stage on Monday. I think you know that Monday is a very special day to me because that's the day that I set the stage for my week. Yeah. What does that look like? Set the stage, set the platform, make sure that I understand what I'm doing this week and why and what's my purpose behind the places and spaces and appointments that I'm going to take. Yeah. That's so key, man, because if you don't know that, yeah. you're going back to existing. Yeah. You're not living. Yeah. You have to know why you're going to be attending something. You have to know why you're running Brandtegic. You have to know what productivity level has to look like for the week. You have like all those things have to be in place. Otherwise, at Friday or Saturday or whenever your week's over, you can't be yeah. upset, disappointed at the action that you didn't take yeah. because you didn't get the results that you wanted. It's like, that doesn't even make sense, right? So those are key things that I think about on a daily basis. Um, Cause like you, man, my bandwidth is only so big and I can only take so much. So you have to be very intentional about the time and, and, and energy that you invest into things. Yeah. So good. yeah. Wiley, thanks for coming on, man. How can people find you? Man, um, social media, any platform at Wiley underscore Cortez on, on uh, Instagram. Uh, if you guys want to check out the clothing brand, it's uh, at Make Moves Not Statements, all one word. Uh, what is it? Socials. So on websites, you can find me at WileyCortez.com and Make Moves Not Statements.com as well. You can find all the uh, confidence coaching um, applications and intake forms on there as well. And give me a shout. Love to talk with you guys. So, yeah. Getting this slide in this guy's DMs. Follow him on social. <laughs> yeah. He's putting out good stuff. Yeah. Is it in the Make Moves Mondays? Um, I'm season one's over right now. Going to kind of chill over the holidays, yeah, man, because yeah. it's just like. For sure. It's a grind. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, I love them, though. Yeah, yeah. I love doing those. I love doing those. Wiley, you're the man. Appreciate Thanks, you, man. bro. Absolutely. Appreciate you, man. Oh.